we also need to kind of define terms here when we talk about what is alpha and what is beta. Oh boy. And I think, I think I'm going to, I'm going to let, cause I know that Ryan doesn't really, doesn't necessarily agree with those terms. And I will tell you just right here, I'm going to throw this out there. I don't see, I, I think a lot of people really get upset when I use the term alpha, or I use the term beta. Um, I use those as placeholder terms. Okay. I don't like people want to say, well, oh, you think that men are silverback gorillas or you think men are like wolves on the plane. Yeah. You're thinking of the, the alpha wolf. Yeah. No, I don't think of things in terms of like, what is a, et etymology? <laughs> I don't think of it in, in, in those kind of things. I think that there are certain aspects and certain parts of men's nature that can be more dominant and can be more passive. Uh, and the guys who are, whose personalities tend to be more what we call alpha. I mean, I think there's some definable traits that we can say, you know, this is alpha and this is, this is beta. It's easy. It's funny. It's like, we, we, we talk quite a bit about, you know, we, we debate back and forth what would be alpha, but when we talk about beta, we kind of know what beta is. And it's like, we, mm -hmm. we get it. We, we understand that we understand the concept, but I think people need to understand that when, when we're using out the terms alpha and beta, these are abstractions for ideas. Okay. It's like, I don't know what it is, but I know it when I see it, you know? And I think that uh, a lot of guys sort of get hung up on what alpha is because they want to define whatever personality traits that they have as alpha. So even the guy who's the most blue pill, you know, plugged in, you know, fe male feminist ally, he thinks he's alpha. He thinks he is. <laughs> he thinks he's alpha because he's doing what, what he thinks women want them, want him to do. And, and and I'm sure there's going to be MGTOWs in the chat that are going to go. Well, you're just pandering to women if you if you if you cater. Well, oh, guess, guess what? If you if you uh, just what you just what you were saying, Donovan. If you build yourself up, if you make yourself into you know the best version of yourself that you can be, which I which is a tenant of MGTOW, you cannot help but have you know stumble across something that is going to arouse and attract a woman. So is that something you set out to do? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But the fact of the matter is she's still attracted to what you got or what you built yourself into. I don't agree so, with that argument anyway, though. I think they're doing that because of the fear of rejection. The, yeah. It, that, you remember Ooh, trying hard? Yeah. That was big term in the 90s? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exactly what that is. And yeah, you're just doing this to impress women. It's like, well, maybe I am because I want to sleep with them. And if I want to sleep with them, I got to be more valuable than Saturday night with a magic egg and a book. Yeah. <laughs> It's well, like saying I, businesses are placating their customers. Like, no, I, it's, yeah. I think that, and, and maybe we'll start the conversation off here. I think that a lot of guys, when it comes to alpha, they they tend, and, and women do this too, particularly red pill women, like to like mm. to say, well, I'm going to tell you what alpha is. And alpha oh, is, bitch, alpha please. is the guy, he, he needs to be a leader of industry and he needs to be, <laughs> you know, a good father and he needs to be, you know, and then these are the same women who like will run down that, <laughs> run down that 438 bullet point list and say, this is what a guy needs to have to be alpha in my book. You know, of course they want to go and turn it around, you know, female solipsism, turn it around into something that is all about them. Uh, but I think that a lot of guys will take this and they'll decide that, you know, whatever is alpha is whatever they're about. So like when I, when I would, when I produced that one essay that I just titled Alpha, it's in the first book, and I used uh, the kid Corey Worthington as an example I love that of one. alpha. People lost their fucking minds, man. They're like, oh, I can't believe you would say this guy's alpha. I mean, that guy, that kid had had alpha to the what I would consider alpha. I mean, like essential, like down to the core alpha. This is a guy who is so alpha, he doesn't know he's alpha. That's why I called him the alpha Buddha. He was so, it was like Zen. <laughs> it was like his first response to anything is, all, first of all, it's all about him. He's his own mental point of origin. That's plain to see right there. Um, and so is so oblivious to the outside world that that alpha nature kind of comes out. And I think that that, that is what that's what a million pickup artists have been trying to get to, like to say, if, if you're if, if you could just channel even like a fraction of what this guy has, you can be successful. You can be successful at game. Uh, I use that and people lost their minds because they thought, well, I'm and men. And rightly so. In some, in some instances, they say, well, look, I busted my ass to be to start my own business. Uh, I, I'm a father of you know three kids. Uh, I go to church every Sunday. I'm a, you know, I, I'm I'm what an alpha ought to be. And they'll run down this checklist of things that are all based on that old set of books, all in that old social contract. And then I'll say, you know what? 
the prisons are full of alpha males. You know how we know that? Because women start their fan clubs for right. you know, convicted <laughs> murderers because that those guys are hot. Why is that? Why is that guy considered alpha? And you're not because Mr. You know, leader of industry and leader of men and, and Mr. You know, go to, you know, Sunday school on, on Sundays. Uh, they hate that because when you see that and they see a guy who's a, basically a piece of shit, they see that and they go, how is this guy considered alpha? And I'm not because I built myself and I put myself up and they feel kind of, you know, you see that guy, I got living a pretty free lifestyle. And why is this guy attracting women? And I'm not attracting women. They don't understand the basic, under, you know, the basic tenets of well, hypergamy and alpha and beta and stuff. But we tend to want to define alpha as whatever it is that we got because we want to be at the top of that dominance hierarchy. And maybe that's what we're, right. maybe that's where we should start is like, is alpha, does alpha necessarily make you at the top of a dominance hierarchy? Well, here's the thing to, to me, a, a, an alpha male is like a nickname. You can't mm -hmm. give it to yourself. Okay. The world has, look, but Hey, if you, in, in case you haven't noticed, I'm an alpha male. No, you don't get to call yourself an alpha male. The world and women get to decide that for you. Women can never describe what an alpha male is. Women feel it. Okay, this is why when they try to when they try to describe what an alpha male is, their shit is all over the place. But guess what? When they see one, when they smell one, they when they feel one, their southern regions moisten up. That's <laughs> that's that's how you can tell. Well, I, again, she can't describe an alpha male, but her pussy can tell her. To me, listen, there are many, many. I don't know. I don't even know if an, I don't even know if alpha male is even a real term. But to me, the term of alpha male is someone who doesn't think of pussy as the most important thing. These are guys that I like to call five percenters. Here's another definition of an alpha male. To me, an alpha male is a man who has the respect of other men. Okay. Um, and, and listen, this man can have respect of other men via his intellect, via his ideas, his physicality, et cetera, et cetera. As far as women goes, if a woman sees that a man has the respect of other men, then she is aroused. Uh, you brought up the uh, the Red Pill Women's Forum. There's a guy in there by the name of Loneliness Inc. And he is, <laughs> you guys have probably heard of him. Ryan, I know you know who this guy is. This guy is a fucking clown. He considers himself to be the alpha male of Red Pill Women. And this dude, this dude is as much of a bitch as my female dog. It's just, it's unbelievable that this guy has sort of dubbed himself the foremost expert on the Red Pill in a woman's form. Dude. You have the respect of women. That doesn't make you alpha, dude. You need to have the respect of men. You're not going to do that in red pill women. And by the way, red pill women is an abject disaster. I think we've talked about all of that. One last thing, man. A lot of guys make excuses for what they can't have. This is why they say that's not very alpha or that's not very masculine. No, dick face. The reason why you're telling me that it's not very masculine or it's not very alpha is because you feel it in your loins too and you wish you were me. Like, you don't have to admit it to me. Like, I get it. I understand, right? Like, I'm this big, imposing guy. I'm loud and boisterous and this and that and the other. But you secretly wish you were me. This is why you make fun of the things that I have. It's just like women who make fun of other women who are hot. Oh, my God. Look at those fake tits. Yeah. Translation, I wish my tits looked like hers. Oh, I don't want to be in a relationship. No, you say you don't want to be in a relationship because you can't be in a relationship of consequence with a man of value. So you make fun of what you can't have as a way to deal with the fact that you can't have it. So when people say, well, that's not very alpha. Yeah, you, okay, you know what? You know what? You say that's not very alpha, but you want to know who thinks I'm an alpha? You do, motherfucker, and you wish you were me. I yep. have never heard a black guy say dick face before. That's <laughs> not very much black guy. I, I want to get to Carl. I want to get to Carl here, but we are we're at the top of the hour, so I just want to make a reminder here. Uh, hit smash the like button, smash the like uh, button, and then hit that little bell so that you get your reminders. Uh, and you're watching and listening to the Red Man Group. We are uh, here every Saturday from 10 a.m. Eastern uh, to about noon. I think we usually go for about two hours. Uh, so that said, um, Donovan, if you want to uh, start the phone calls, we can, we can start Let's taking, we can start getting the phone calls right. rocking and rolling. We're going to keep, we're going to continue on. I've got, a, I've got a bunch of other one, points I want to hit, but we'll start taking phone calls. So if anybody wants to chime in and, and let us know what they think, that's fine too. Uh, Carl, what were you going to say? No, I want to make an analogy because I think a lot of guys add a lot of value judgment into the alpha and beta categories. And I think if you do an analogy of corporations that you have successful and unsuccessful corporations. 
And the successful ones usually have some things in common. They have, you know, solid financials. They know their books. They have a strategy formulated. They know which market they're appealing to, et cetera. Unsuccessful businesses likewise have certain things in common. They maybe have no control over their money flows. They have problems in their value chain, et cetera. And the alpha is the successful corporation. The beta is the less successful or the unsuccessful corporation. So in order to move from one category to the other, you have to fix those problems. And I think it's the same thing with um, with the alpha and beta. It's not really a value judgment about someone's human worth. It's just a statement of, are they engaging in effective behaviors as related to intersexual dynamics, or are they engaging in ineffective behaviors as related to intersexual dynamics? Mm-hmm. And for me, that, that's all it is. And just saying alpha is much easier than saying, you know, okay, this is a guy who's he's more dominant than passive. He's more extroverted than introverted. He's more, um, what's it? In? He's less anxious rather than more anxious. He's less agreeable rather than more agreeable. And you can list off all these things. And I have a couple of blog posts on it that kind of break that down by the five factor test. But it's much easier if you just think of it as find your current position and move from that to the other one, the one you want to be at, and just look at other guys who are successful. What are they doing right and what are you currently doing wrong? I think a, a lot of people really need to understand that just because just because you're alpha, let's just say for sake of argument, just because you're alpha does not make you red pill. You can be alpha and be very much a white knight and be very much blue pill and be very much a quote unquote female ally. You can still do that and still have like some sort of alpha ness to you because you think you're going to, yeah, I'm sure you've probably met these guys where they, they'll, they'll, they'll want to correct you. They'll, they'll like step up and say, Hey, the lady said this, you know, and they'll, they'll white knight for that lady or that woman because they feel like that is they'll they'll step up dude you know, dude whoa, whoa, hold on real quick i hate when guys do that yes dude listen when a man says hey apologize to the lady it makes me want to put my fist through your face look dude <laughs> just be listen here's the thing i feel like Sandy says you know she's not gonna suck your dick after i kick your ass right like you're gonna tell me well the lady said this get the fuck out of here, man. Like, yeah. dude, you're not fooling anybody with that nonsense. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I was gonna say just as it is that you can still be very much, uh, you can be very beta and still be red pill aware. You just don't know how to put it into practice. You go. I think or you, you don't want to, or you're a, afraid. Yeah, you, there needs to be a separation between those two, because I think that especially newbies who come to you and they're just unplugging and they think, or, and I, and purple pill guys get this wrong all the time. They think that we think that there, you have to be alpha and then you're red pill if you're alpha. No, 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 no. There's those. There are mutually exclusive between those two. Um, I I think that like what Carl was talking about is it, it, you know they're understanding those uh, the nuances I guess you know as to what what is successful and what is not. I mean we learn and when we're looking at behaviorism we we learn by watching what other people are doing and I think that a lot of people a lot to to learn from that and to apply that you sort of have to get past your own ego. You have to sort of, un- that's one of the reasons it's like so important for guys to unplug and to sort of just bust themselves down and uh, read the book Mastery by uh, Robert Greene and become that student and say, you know what, what I've been, you know, you will keep getting what you have gotten if you keep doing what you have done. Okay. So if you, uh, if you want to change something up and you want something to be changed in your life, you're going to have to change something in your life. You're going to have to unlearn the shit that you've learned and you're going to have to be open to learning something new and say, you know what, maybe I was wrong about that. And that's really tough for, for people to do, particularly if you're blue pill, particularly if you're committed to this idea that the only way that you're going to have a, you know, a legitimate uh, relationship or the only way you're going to legitimately uh, have sex with a woman is to, you know, uh, identify with her, identify with the feminine, do what she says, you know, follow along. Cause you're going to be learning either from other men who are successful, or you're going to be learning from women who are going to tell you, I think you should be doing this. The other thing I want to say is that alpha is contextual. So mm-hmm. when, uh, when you're, uh, when you're teaching a class and one of the things that I've, I've found out, I found that this out kind of interesting, uh, um, at being a, a I've, I've directed some like TV commercials and some like, uh, some performance type stuff for brands that I've had to work with for liquor brands that I have to work with. And so at being the art quote unquote art director, um, directing people 
in what it is that I want them to do on camera. I find that women love that. They love to have a guy direct them and tell them what it is that they want them to do. They, 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 t I think <laughs> I'm going to sound really sexist here, but I think women take direction from men very well. If you have the balls to step up and say, look, I'm the one calling the shots here and you're going to do what I want you to do. So when you see like, especially like even these guys who are like gay men, when they're, when they're directing women to do choreography or they're directing fashion shows and things like that. Uh, women love that. They, they're not going to get with the guy obviously because he's gay, but they like to be, they like to be shown where, where, where and what to do in those situations. Now that makes that situation puts that director into what I call a contextual alpha position. So when, when what Donovan was talking about, uh, about how that alpha guy needs to be uh, somebody that an, uh, a man recognizes. I think that's true, but we're also talking about it within a social context. So for instance, like if, if you're dealing with gang members and drug dealers and there's the guy who is the leader of the gang, that guy has the respect of other gang members, but he might not have the respect of a guy like we were talking about before, who is like, you know, this leader of industry is a good father uh, is what we would call um, you know, socially, a socially acceptable, you know, non-toxic male who thinks he's alpha, he's not going to have the, that, that, that gang leader is not going to have the respect of, of the guy who doesn't have any respect for him. Right. Or if he's a criminal, we don't have any respect for those guys who are criminals because they're in prison and they're in prison for a reason. Women find them attractive and other men in that context, you know, maybe other prisoners or other gang members, find him you know to be a dominant alpha but we're we're looking at him from within a social context so like one of the reasons i think that women fall in love with their teachers like when they're at a, at a college or something i fall in love with the teachers because that is putting that teacher into a contextual alpha position because he's there and he knows something that you don't and you have to bust yourself down and be open to learning something from him and so therefore it places him and within a dominance hierarchy where he knows something that you don't and you need to you know submit to his teaching you something and so that is what i would say something as a more puts a man into a contextually alpha relationships. So you see these guys who, who, uh, you know, these college teachers who end up banging their students because the girl fell in love with him. Why? Well, you know, and then once they get out of the classroom, all of that's gone, but she can't, and she can't put her finger on why she fell in love with that guy in the first place. But I think that alpha needs to be something that we understand is contextual. I like keeping it simple too. Just hormones, mm -hmm. dopamine, uh, serotonin. Yeah. If your mm -hmm. behavior in gets one or gets the other, easiest way there to discover which one's which. Oh, there's a biological aspect for sure. Yeah.